Hi. So today I want to show you how you can create a screen shader like you see right now, where parts of the screen are turned black and white or have a colored hue replacing the base colors on it. So let's get to it. First of all, I am starting out with pretty much just an empty scene. All I have here is a color rectangle, which just serves as a background color so we can see what's happening, a very large Godot icon and my necromancer. So if you play this scene, nothing special happens. So now we want to create a, another color rectangle because these are rather convenient as they render a color over a predefined section, but are easy to resize and stuff like this. So let's just use that for now. And at this point, we can already start by creating a shader. Let's go into materials, material set a new shader material. Click that, click the shader property, click new shader. So now we click that thing again and we're in here. Now we have a code editor specifically for shaders. First of all, we can specify the shader type. Our shader is going to be a canvas item type because that's what we're working on. And then we can say, we are going to make this a fragment shader. I'm not going into the details what different types of shaders are since this is just a very basic shader tutorial, but essentially a fragment shader is going to be the most simple form you will be using at the start. So let's do this and we have a function. Now, first of all, what we want is we want to set the color property, which is essentially our output color to our input color texture, screen texture, it already recommends it, nice. Screen UV. So this here is what would normally be shown on the screen, anything that's behind our color rectangle basically. And this here is the position of our current pixel. The fragment shader is going to be applied for each pixel, so this here essentially means we take the color of whatever location on the screen we currently are at. So now if we say, we want to change this color. Let's just work on the RGB because we don't care about the uh, transparency. Then we can say vector three color dot R plus color dot G plus color dot B divided by 3.0. So first of all, we can just sum up the three colors which are just numbers. So the number values can just be added up. We put them into a vector three because that's what RGB essentially becomes. And we can divide it by three to take the average of our colors. Now our average color is always going to be in grayscale. So let's just make sure we have uh, semicolons here at the end everywhere. And let's see what happens. There you go. Now our texture is already in grayscale. I can move this around. Wherever I go, it becomes grayscale. But that's not the entire effect we want yet, because we still want to be able to specify a hue for this grayscale stuff to get. So let's do that. Let's add a uniform that is essentially an input variable, going to be a vector four because it's a color. Actually, no, let's make it a vector three because we don't actually care about the transparency right now. If you want to account for transparency, you can use a vector four. I'll just not do that. I'll call it tint. Now, what we want to do with that is color.rgb gets updated again to color.rgb divided by two plus tint.rgb also divided by two. So essentially we are adding our color to the tint. We could also simplify this and say we add these up first and then divide by two. It doesn't really matter which order we do it. But as you can see, first of all, it gets a bit darker because currently our tint is black by default. So everything gets mixed in with blackness, making it quite a bit darker. So let's just try setting this to one and everything gets red. We can make everything quite bright. We can set values higher than one if we want really strong colors here. And now it's completely white and that's essentially how it's going to work. So let's just set something like 0 0.5, 
0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go, we just got some color. We can move this into some position we like. Let's rotate it a little too. Then let's make a copy of this. Duplicate, move it down here. Make them a bit larger because it doesn't look nice like that. You know, they should cover the entire screen if we want this little overlay effect. And now one more important thing to take care of here is that these are actually going to be sharing the same shader. So currently if we try to change the color of one, the other is going to be changing as well. So if we change this to uh, one, both of them change their color. We don't want that. So what we can do is we can make the shader unique. Just right click the shader material and make unique. Right click the shader and make that unique as well. And now everything we change in here is going to be specific to this instance. So now if we make this one, this one changes, that one doesn't. And if we play it, there we go. That's how you can make this simple shader effect in Godot. That will be all for today. Bye.